Hi everybody, my name is Nika Richard and I've received a lot of love for um, this classroom here that I created. Thank you guys so much. Um, and you had a lot of questions for me. I promise I'm gonna get straight to it. I hate videos and tutorials that drag along. Um, but I really enjoy making these virtual classrooms. And if you just stay tuned, I'm gonna walk you through. If you have not already set up an account with Teacher Pay Teachers, and you are a teacher, or I mean, even if you work from home, uh, please do that. Uh, go ahead and follow me. I actually just opened this up yesterday, um, and I uploaded my first three products. I do have something here free for you guys. If you do download it, I just ask that you follow me first, and then write, um, you know, write me something at the end, or you could even just use the stars feature. Let me know how you like it. I love feedback. Um, I also have this uh, dimensional Bitmoji classroom, the one that I showed you guys. That is 375. You get everything in that room, uh, plus everything in this room as well. And then lastly, I've created a bunch of furniture you get 20 pieces of realistic furniture and um just things that you could put in your room everything you see in the pictures is what's provided plus much much more we have love seats couches sofas everything like that so again please follow me on teacher pay teachers go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you have not um and let's get started on this tutorial oh, we could be perfect together Whenever you open up your your um, your Google Slides or your PowerPoint, the first thing that I want you guys to do is remove these boxes because if you don't, they'll end up showing up and they'll be in the way. So get those out of the way, click on the entire box, hit delete, make sure they're gone. Because sometimes when you click present, and I'm gonna show you really quick, it'll appear as if it's not there. However, once you start putting furniture in your walls and stuff up there, it will show up some way, somehow. Okay, so we're starting out with a blank slate. Um, I wanna uh, go over a few basics first. I promise you guys it's gonna take very, very little time. So I just went into my download from Teachers Pay Teachers and it'll be in a zipped file. You just click on it and it'll turn into this folder like that. And you'll see that you have your different um, things here always start right here. There's important information there. Okay, so um, We're inside of some of our furniture pieces here. And I'm going to show you guys what I mean by using these uh, using the corners instead of Dragging them side to side see what happens when you do that it starts to look very you know, not very professional, I guess, if I could, for the lack of a better word. Um, just don't drag the corners of the pictures. And if you do do it by accident, click on Command Z and it'll go back to normal. That's Command Z or I think for Windows, that'll be uh, Control Z. All right, so we're going to delete that. Okay, so obvi obviously we'll need to start out with our room and you can choose whichever room you want we're going to be making the one that's most popular which is this one the one that i showed you guys first and i made this myself i found a picture of someone's bedroom and i just love that wood again even with these um even with the the floor and the walls you don't want to stretch it because look what happens will it even allow you to stretch it it the the bricks just start to get all wonky i don't want that control z control z also don't want to stretch this out so what you're going to have to do is you can pull it up or down it doesn't matter and you're going to want to stretch this out as wide as you can let me also open up this window more you want to stretch that out as wide as you can and then you're going to want to line it up with the corners as much as possible if you want less floor because if you look over here in this area, you'll see that it's like half floor, half wall, and we don't want that either. So I'm gonna pull it down a little bit and you'll check over here periodically to see your floor to wall ratio. And it may not look per uh, perfect right away, but get it as perfect as you want it, all right? And the reason we're not doing this in the backgrounds portion of this is because the backgrounds will stretch it out 
or it'll give you limited options on moving your background. We also don't want this background showing up on another slide. So I'm actually putting it on here as a picture, as an image. If I want to delete it, I have no problem deleting it or even replacing it. So if you were to do replace image, you can upload it from a computer or search the web. You don't have to do, you. It'll, it won't be as easy with the background. Now that you've looked over here and you see your floor to wall ratio and you like it, you're going to hit the crop button and then you're going to want to make sure that it is on your slide completely. And what I'm looking for is this really fine line right here. Can you guys see that? It's a fine line right here where my slide ends. I almost did not see it, but I kind of had to look off here to the side. So my slide ends right here and it'll click into place. It'll turn red. And you're going to want to do the same thing on all sides. If you have not, um, if you have to do it on all sides, you're going to go ahead and hit the crop button, then move over here to the left. And we're going to crop this side as well. It'll click to place when it'll turn red. Let's see, probably already passed it up. Nope, okay, so that's fine, just like that. Okay, and I'm gonna double check the bottom to make sure that's all um, on the edges as well. And it looks like it is. I'm just gonna pull this right back down. Okay, so this will make your Bitmoji Classroom look a little, um, look a little better. I'm gonna zoom out slightly. Well, I didn't want to do it that much. Let's let's just uh, do it at 50 right now so that we can see. Okay. All right. The next thing you're going to want to do is to move in your furniture. That's the best part, right? You already have the walls. You have the floor up. Let's go into our furniture. Okay. And I start with the biggest pieces of furniture first. So we have the uh, the whiteboard, the Promethean board. If you wanted to use um, a chalkboard or uh, just have a bulletin board up, you could have done that as well. We're not discriminating. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this over here on the wall and then I'm going to move in my bulletin board. And my bulletin board will be slightly smaller than my uh, Promethean board, okay? And the Promethean board is just another word for smart board. Sorry, I don't mean to board you guys with all of my terminology here. Okay, so we have that over there on the wall. Um, let's go ahead and put our bookshelf down over there in front of the, um, in front or right underneath the bulletin board. So again, we're scaling it down using the corners. We never want to scale side to side. It just stretches everything out. Okay. And if you'll notice in the picture that we have as our, as our exemplar, there are only four shelves. On here, we have five shelves. So what I'm going to do is crop it. Okay. So you hit that crop image button right there and you're going to pull it down. I actually want to pull it down to about three uh, because it looks like, uh-oh, see what I did there? I stretched it. Make sure that it's not in the shape of crosshairs. You want it to be in the shape of a small arrow. Okay, there we go. Hit crop. And then we're going to scale down some more as much as you can. Our small bookshelf I'm actually going to make that a little smaller and I want it to kind of fit snug right underneath there okay uh, the next thing I'm going to lay down is my rug on the floor and this rug um, it's already kind of shaped you know to seeing it on the floor um, it's not just a perfect circle and you never want to find furniture like that because it, it usually won't work out um, again, I'm pulling it using the edges. I'm going to put that kind of in the middle of the floor. 
and then I'm going to come in with my pillows. Now the order that you put things in the room um, is the order they will be unless you do something that I'm about to show you. Okay, let me get my other pillows and I'm going to put that here. You see how this pillow is in front? I want to make it smaller. Let me, I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Just give me one second. And this pillow is huge. I meant to scale that down at first. Okay, so after putting this pillow where you want it to go, um, in order to make it go behind the yellow pillows, because that's what we really want, you're going to hit Command and then hit the down arrow. And that'll put it back. If you do command up arrow, it'll bring it back to the front. So that's just kind of how you regroup things on your on your page. Uh, so say for instance, you put this carpet down and you decided to put it down last because you wanted to add it. Click command down arrow until it goes back down, until it goes underneath your, your, uh, your other furniture or your decorations. If you click doing, the, if you keep clicking the down arrow, it'll eventually go behind your room and that's not what we want. So if that happens, just click the room and put that, push that to the back, okay? All right, let's go ahead and go in with our desk. And this is a huge desk <laughs> at first. And I like for my, my, um, my stuff to be scaled pretty much as I would see it. You know, pillows aren't usually as tall as a desk, um, but it's okay if you don't get it perfect. Um, I'm going to move this over to the side. I don't want it to look too cluttered. And then, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I have a chair behind my desk. So I'm going to scale this chair down. I do want the chair to kind of be seen peeking from behind the desk. So I'm just going to put it back there and then command down arrow and it'll go right behind there for me okay i'm going to put the clock on the wall scale that down and this is so easy to do you guys um once you have a picture to look at um and if you want yours to look just like mine that is perfectly fine you do you okay okay so here's a um a lamp that i added um, this lamp is actually used for this classroom it's right there. Um, I also, well, did I use it in there? No, I didn't. Um, I used it on my desk, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it on my desk. All right. Now, another thing is if you have way too much room, which you guys will if you've downloaded my stuff, uh, if you have way too much room, you can always, um, scale it down. Okay, and then I'm going to place this on my desk. Just a little lamp, it kind of blends in, no biggie. And you just do that with everything else, okay? I'm kind of speed through the rest of it. Okay, one thing I want to show you guys is how to insert some of the shapes that I have over here on my bulletin board. So we have the syllabus sign, uh, this little um, thing that says kid, that lets kids know that they can explore. We have all of these things over here. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. So you'll notice that um, it says to click around some things are links. So up here. This is a link to an inspirational video. I'm not gonna really go into them, but they're inspirational videos. If a kid is just kind of exploring around, they can click on these. Uh, the syllabus actually leads to my syllabus. Um, the do now, that's their uh, their do now work. So that's their bell ringers, their warm ups. That'll all go there. Um, th this is a link for them to email me. Uh, the Google Classroom codes is right here. Their Google Classroom is right there, so they can actually click on these things and, and they'll go places. Um, but before I show you how to do that, I want to show you how to make one of these. 
So go to insert shape and you can click on any of these shapes. I mean, I use this little banner shape right here and I just put it here and then I filled it in with any color you want. You can also do a gradient pattern if you want. That one's pretty. You can also do a gradient. And in order to uh, type inside, you just double click and type inside of it. And you can move your text to the middle. Um, I prefer my text to be white if I have like a contrasting background. And you'll just do that. Okay, and you can do that all around here. So for here, because this already comes on the board, we're going to insert a text box, okay? So insert a text box there, and you can write email, and that will be way too big, so you just size it on down until it fits, and that's how you write on these little sheets of paper, okay? Um, a lot of you were wondering um, how I made the clock interactive. Again, I'm, I'll show you that right now. So you click on the clock and the hands don't move. Unfortunately, this is just a picture. Um, I don't have it set to where uh, my slides are video. So this is just a picture. So you click on the clock and then you're going to click right here on this insert link. And for my clocks, I always use time dot is. And this is the exact time of wherever that person is. So you just do that. So once people click on that and they follow the link, it tells them the exact time. Of course, they can always use their phone or whatever, but I think it's always cool to be able to go in here, see the world clock, see the exact time of wherever you are um, if you want to. I just like to make my classroom interactive. So uh, if I were to make this Black Lives Matter poster interactive, I may put an article to what's going on. Um, you know, in today's society surrounding Black Lives Matter, or if I want to add a link uh, regarding pride to to make, um, not to make my kids, but so that they can kind of have an understanding as to where that is as far as social issues are. Anything, if you want to make the pillow a link to something that's comforting to them, or you want to make the bookshelf a link to your school library, there the, the possibilities are endless, you guys. You can do anything you want on here. Um, if you want your Zoom norms to be a video of how kids should act on Zoom, you can do that as well. Uh, for my board, what I've done um, is this will be a link uh, somewhere that tells my kids about me. It's not right now uh, because I haven't updated my, my video for this year just yet. But they'll click on that sign and it'll take them to a, a video where they can see of myself talking. Um, the standards all of this will be active everything i want everything to be active this is actually a link that leads them to basic punctuation rules so i want kids to be able to click on stuff and and go places whenever they click on it you can also add your school's logo the the possibilities are endless as i've said okay um another thing i wanted to show you guys is how to make your objects look more real. So right now, see how this has a little bit more dimension uh, in comparison to this room, this looks more flat. What you're going to want to do, and we'll start with the Promethean board. You'll click on the Promethean board, click Format Options, and then under Format Options, you'll have this option for a drop-down shadow. And this shadow just makes everything look a little more di um, dimensional and I literally do that for everything in my room okay I do a drop down shadow on everything because it makes everything look so much better um, it adds dimension to it it adds contrast uh, it'll start to look like a real room okay so I literally do that to everything that I can I even put that on the lamp. It just gives it so much more dimension. And I, I know that you guys see that. Okay. In another video, I'm going to show you guys how to make a Bitmoji um, and how to make your Bitmoji transparent. If you don't know that already, show you how to create a link to a document 
that you have on say Google Drive or, or something like that, you're going to click on the text and then click insert link. You'll go and find that material that you want to add to your to your link. Click on share, copy the link, and then you're going to paste the link there and apply. And then once you have it on there, you'll notice that the color will change. You want to remove the underlining and turn it back to the original color that it was. Okay. Okay. So no, I don't have everything on in my classroom just yet. However, I want to go ahead and add my Bitmoji. So I have taken my Bitmoji image and I put it inside of my classroom. Again, you're going to want to scale her or him to the size that you want. And I kind of have her leaning on the desk. And who doesn't love a good cup of Starbucks? So you go into the decor and clutter, I think is where I put it. Yes. And then you're going to add your Starbucks logo, make it as small as you need it to be. And you just stick that right there on the cup. Now I'm going to zoom in so that I can just take a closer look at how this logo looks on there. And then I'm going to put it right in the middle. And that's it. Walking in the sand like nothing's wrong. I'm just trying to write you a song. Thank you guys so much for coming to my tutorial. If you have any pressing questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as possible. I might even upload another tutorial on how to do the things that you guys are mentioning in the comments go more into depth on on just everything to all of my teachers i just want to tell you guys good luck i hope you have the best year ever i know that we're in the middle of a pandemic and everything is not as ironed out as we would like them to be however we're still in this and i just hope for the best for you guys thank you so much for watching if you've not already click subscribe go ahead and subscribe to my channel i come out with great tips and tricks um and yes, I am just starting this, but I have a plethora of knowledge and information uh, regarding everything teaching. So you guys have a great day and enjoy creating your Bitmoji classroom.